Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Oh, welcome back, everybody. We're going to talk about something today that many of us, we do this, but we shouldn't be doing it. What am I talking about? The language that you use. And it's said before that by many, you know, the, the focus goes where the attention goes or something. I'm not, I, it's something to that effect. <laughs> but what you say becomes your reality. So we're going to talk about the words that you never want to say. Either they're negative or they influence your outcome. They shape your beliefs, your behavior. And this is all in her wheelhouse. This, this, I'm going to watch what she says from this point forward, actually. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Visible <laughs> potential is her practice. She's an amazing life coach, trauma-informed life coach as well. Lori Kroger is back with us. Hello. How are you? I am doing well. How are you today? I'm doing really well. And this is a a great topic because we're doing these things. We're saying them, but we're not realizing that it's kind of derailing what we're trying to accomplish or or changing our future based on words. And words are so powerful. They really are. And what we don't understand is that even if we're joking, oh my gosh, I am such an idiot. I can't believe your brain doesn't know the difference. Right. Brain doesn't know that you don't mean what you're saying. I'm and glad so you started inadvertently with that. putting yourself down. I'm glad you started with that because that's really the baseline for all of this. It's your subconscious. Your subconscious, it loves you. It wants to support you, but it's kind of dumb. It doesn't know the difference when you say these things. It doesn't know good from bad, right from wrong. It just hears the words, and then it acts. Yep. Uh, and it's there, you know, it's designed to protect you. Mm, yes. And what's funny is what we, what our brains think we need protecting from is historical. We're running from bears. We're running from, you know, all of these things in, you know, prehistoric times. And so it's still trying to protect us. That stress that came from the fear of running from a saber-toothed tiger is no different than the stress we feel getting mad at a coworker. As far as our brain is concerned, it needs to protect us. Mm -hmm. And that comes about with how we speak to ourselves. So which one do you want to start with today? My absolute favorite, I can't. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let's start with I can't because we say it, even I catch myself still saying I can't. Mm -hmm. And What it is, is telling yourself that there is no possibility. There are no options. And you've limited your ability to think outside the box. So if we replace the words, I can't, with I don't know how, it triggers our mind into a problem-solving mode. Hmm. If we say to a friend, you know, just last week, I told my friend, I can't, I started to say, I can't go to the lake today. And I had to reframe that. And I said, I don't know how, as I didn't have a vehicle for the kayak. I didn't have, you know, I had my car, but my kayak doesn't fit. You should have called, and, you should have called me. I have a, a junky old Jeep that I use for that. And <laughs> plenty of space, plenty of space. For, and I, you know, if you and saw then we it, just, it triggered, on. yeah, mm-hmm. it triggered the problem solving. She goes, oh, well, I have Ryan's blow up. You know, you can jump on the paddleboard. Sure. But it triggers a problem solving in both my mind and hers. And we were able to come up with a solution. Love it. And then if you replace the I can't with I don't want to, instead of saying, you know, oh, I, I can't go out with you today. No, I don't want to. And it's either because you have other obligations or whatever that looks like. You're being more authentic and Mm. you're saying, okay, I'm sick. I don't want to come to work today. It's not that I can't. Oh, I absolutely can. But you're being more authentic when you say the words, I don't want to. Do you feel that we don't, we're afraid to commit and show our real feelings by saying, I don't want to. Absolutely. You're you're giving it up. You're, yeah. Hey, let's go to dinner. I don't want to. Instead of I can't. Yeah. I can't is like an easy release. I can't could be anything. It is. It truly is the easy way out. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, but when you are forced to say, okay, I don't want to, it comes out as, okay, I have other commitments. If the other person then has an opportunity to say, okay, you don't want to spend time with me, or you don't want to go to this place, would another time work better? It brings about a opportunity for more conversation. Right. And you're not hiding behind, I can't. It makes you know, it's the, or the, I can't, but I could, uh... but. Okay. Maybe if I didn't have this. Here's some more of those words that we use all the time. Let's 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 <laughs> if you open the door. I, I it could be one of the most negative words in the English language and when you use the word but it negates everything you said before that. Like for example, uh that shirt looks great on you, but it's a little tight. Why'd you give the compliment in the first place? You used put the but in there. And now it just negated the the compliment, and now we focus on, but well, it looks a little tight. Um, yeah, it's 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 just not good. <laughs> so either it looks great or it doesn't. Exactly. Yes. Like again, it comes down to that authenticity. Colorado you know? is a great place to vacation in the winter, but it's cold. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, you know, or the the I love you, but mm. yeah, yeah. There you go. I love you, but when you do this, you know, either you love me or you don't. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. let's take butt out of there. Sure. I love you. Can we work on this? Or use and. I love Colorado in the winter. Let's find something a little warmer. (laughs) Or use the word and. Colorado (laughs) is a great place to vacation in the winter, and it's cold. Well, you're stating a fact. It is. There's, There's no, we're not making it a negative. We're just adding it. That shirt looks great on you. It's a little tight. Okay. It's a fact. All right. Done. Move on. Hey. You know where I, I it's learned the- It's more authentic. It's, it's more it honest. I learned the and from little kids because they never say but. It's always, I went to the store today and I bought ice cream and they had candy and they had 14 flavors and it was so much fun. <laughs> and. Yes. How about, well, I have another one. You go, you go, it's your turn now. Okay. It's your turn now. <laughs> Well, we started with the butt, so it was like yeah, it was a fifty-fifty. Um, no, I, we started with I can't. You know what? I want to. I want to just one exception to the can. What is that? I can't. When somebody says I can't even, like when somebody does something, and you're like I can't even. <laughs> I'm gonna say that's the only time you it can comes, say I it. It comes down to I don't know how even. <laughs> I, don't, like, I don't know how. Yeah. Like how can I? I how did you do that? I can't even process. I can't even. Or I, I you know, somebody does. Something I don't want to. I don't want to basically. process that. Yeah, like I don't even know. I don't know. But anyway, um, here's one. Two words. Have to. I have to take my kids to practice. I have to go to work today. Ooh. I have to do this. I have to do that. Really? You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Hundred percent. I have to go to work. I have to do this. No, it is absolutely a choice. Mm-hmm. And it is a choice based on the consequences. Consequences are good or bad. I have to go to work. No, I choose to go to work yeah. because I want to pay my bills. I want a roof over my head. I want gas for my car and food in my stomach. I choose to go to work. I don't have to. I, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Or, or how about this? I get to. I get to. I get to, I get to go to work. It's a, it's it's a gift. Uh, it is. I, I get I, I get to take my kids to practice because they're able to do sports. They're healthy. Imagine if they weren't and they couldn't run down the football field. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. And that's a big one. I love right. the I get to, and I choose to. Yeah. 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 You know, and- those are are two ways to replace that. I have to. Mm. You know, and you can do I want to if you really like, but if you don't, if you really don't, you really don't want to go to work. I'm choosing. And if you're choosing to do something, be happy about it. You had a choice. Yeah. And everything is a choice, essentially. Um, all right. Now it's your I time. can choose whether or not I go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I then have to deal with said consequences. Well, well, okay. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, I have an isolated one. I can I can get to that. Or you can do one. Uh, Let's start with the if. Okay. Let's go to if. You know, I would do this if. Hmm. What does that if stand for? Or I will do this when. So you have the if and the when. 
that is, again, limiting your belief system. It is limiting the mindset of your abilities. If I didn't have to go to work, I could do this. If I had a million dollars, I could do this. So go make a million dollars. How about I'm going to apply for a new job when the fall gets here. All you're doing is delaying it. It's procrastination. Yeah. And procrastination, <laughs> I've discovered that most procrastination is part of a small T trauma response. There is a yes, fear it is. involved. There is a fear involved yes. that creates the procrastination. A hundred percent. Somebody told me that in the last, uh, I don't know, five months. Yeah. Yeah. When you said <laughs> it, it clicked back in. It's like, mm, yeah. yeah. And the, it is. the if is a blame too. Like, for example, um, you know, I would communicate more if you wouldn't judge me. It's your fault. Yes. It's you. Yes. Instead of taking responsibility, if you did this, I could do that. Absolutely. <laughs> hmm. So what about the phrases that you should never use? I, I've got one. I've used it. It's, um, it's so easy to say, but it's so negative. When you say, well, could be worse. Yeah. You're telling your subconscious, be worse. It doesn't know what came before that. Just be worse. Make it worse. And that's what you find. That's exactly what happens. Well, my tire went flat. Could be worse. I could have three blowouts. Guess what? Boom, boom, boom. (laughs) Yeah, right. You know, it really does. What you project into the world is what's going to come back. (laughs) And it's... Reframe it. Reframe it. Just reframe it. Hmm. Yeah, I've had better days. Let's make it better. Or when you wake up and you walk out and you have a flat. Ah, oh, really? Another th- it's going to be that one of those days. What, what, what else is going to happen now? Ooh. Fantastic. Ah, great. Change that flat. It's going to be one of those days. One of those days. Mm, that's a good one. That's one of the ones I hear probably more often than not. And- I really, I want to say, don't do that. You know, you are creating that. You just put into the universe that it's going to be one of those days. So if you're going to do that, say, oh, it's, you know, this is two seconds out of my day. It's going to be a great day. Even if you're being sarcastic about it, your brain doesn't know, oh, it's going to be a great day. It doesn't matter. It's you're still making it a great day. (laughs) Just like you said before, even when you joke about it, it's going to be one of those days. Well, it, it, you're, you're telling yourself to make it one of those days. Why not make it, this is going to be the best day of my life. Yeah. Why, why not use that? What exactly. You know, and find little ways to make it better. Yep. Attitude is a big difference in how you choose to, to show up. I did a, a little thing during Toastmasters on attitude. And the story comes from, you know, you get up, you're having a beautiful day. It's a great morning. Everything's perfect. You're running half an hour early. It's amazing. You get in your car. You're driving to work. You stop and grab your coffee. Somebody slams on the brake. You spill coffee all over you. Okay, now you have to go back home. Now you're running late. Where's your attitude? And what do you start to see? You know, you're headed back out to work. Okay, you still got about 15 minutes. It's all good. You stop to get another cup of coffee. The barista gets your order wrong. Okay, How's your attitude now? And by the time you get to work, what is that producing for your day? It's all the negative energy. Instead of just saying, oh, well, I spilled coffee on myself. You know, you keep moving forward instead of letting it build and build and build and build and build. I would have a great day, but I spilled coffee on myself this morning. We're sure. It's, you know, it goes back to what my mom always used to say. Sure. (laughs) You've heard it before. Be careful what you ask for because you're going to get it. So you're asking for it. You asked for it. You asked for one of those days. You're going to get it. Your wishes, you know, another your wishes phrase, come in. Another phrase that really gets my goat sometimes is the, um, oh, it was just there and it just ran away. It's going to be one of those days. <laughs> it, <laughs> it had to do with people. Hmm. Okay, so apparently that's not met, met what I was meant to talk about right now because it literally came in and went out hmm. real quick. So let's go to another one. Your choice. Oh, I got to think deep on this one. Um, I don't have one. I'm thinking and I'm trying. <laughs> hmm. 
why does the subconscious do that? Why is it so just dumb in some ways? Why, why, why is it like that? I've always wondered about that. So part of it is how we've been trained. Think about from the time we are one year old and we're saying, no, no, no. We're constantly being told no. And then doing the opposite. Well, you can't do that. You know, this is wrong. You can do that, but, or, you know, they're the phrases that we hear growing up all the time Uh and it just becomes ingrained in our mind. But then, like I said, in the beginning, it is that protection that, you know what? I would love to get a job where I make more money. But I fear it's going to add more responsibility. I'm going to have to work more. Our brain is now protecting us from getting that job because we don't want to put in the extra hours. And so it's, it is a protective mechanism hmm. that you said you wanted it, but you really don't. It's a belief system. Yeah, I get, I'm looking at it as a negative, but really it's more of a positive because like you said, it's protecting you. It's yeah. protecting you. And it's just going with what you're giving it. Hmm. 100%. I'm trying to think of other ones. Um, I'm really oh. hoping that one comes back to me. Oh, wait a minute. It's coming. <laughs> uh, wait, if it's coming to me, um, I can't wait to hang out with you later. Oh, fun. That's a good one. <laughs> you can't wait. Then don't. <laughs> exactly. We And we. It, it comes from the most positive place possible. You're excited. I can't wait for dinner tonight. Oh, I'm so hungry. And and that restaurant, it, it just it's, it's fantastic. We mean it in a in a very positive way. That's never meant in a negative so let's way. Just change, let's change that. I can't. To, I don't know how to wait so long to be able to have dinner with you. Or flip it around and say, I'm looking forward to having dinner with you yeah. and going to that restaurant. Just call it what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Casa Bonita's at the top of my list. I can't wait. Yeah. Well, I have to wait. <laughs> you have to wait. Yeah. My reservation isn't until next month, so. <laughs> Maybe it comes from being a kid. Maybe that's that's where it is, you know, because, you know, I, I can hear a kid say, I can't wait. I can't wait for Christmas. I can't wait. Uh, maybe that's, and we, we, you know, it's a holdover from then. And again, it's that one is always meant in a very positive way. It really is. There's nothing. It includes the excitement. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and what you're telling yourself is, I'm impatient. I can't wait. Right. And so your body is now going through this anxiety or creating this frustration. Hmm. You are being forced to wait, you know, instead of just say, I am so excited for Christmas. I am so excited to go to that restaurant with you. Sure. Versus using that word, I can't wait, the, that phrase. So, well, you have to wait. It, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. I, never, I mean, you're very, this is, this is the, such the truth. Um, you are creating anxiety, even if it's a little oh. tiny bit by saying, I can't wait. Yeah. I, even I get anxiety just saying it in my stomach, like, you know, I can't wait. It's, it's meant in a good way, um, but it, it's all in the language. Um, you know, I can't wait until my kids are grown up enough to be able to communicate with me. I can't wait until I don't have to change their diapers anymore. Or, But think about all the stress that you're creating just by saying those words. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's, that's more of a negative. I'm looking forward to the day. I am looking forward to this piece, you know. It, it really does come down to how we are choosing to speak to ourselves. Isn't it amazing how even in this day of technology and everything that's going on, you know, compare it to 300 years ago, the words are the same. The communication is the same. The words do the same exact thing. We're just using them in different ways on social media, you know, wherever, AI, it's still the same words. Yeah. And they do the same thing. They can harm. They can change the outcome, change the intent. It's all the same. So it's just amazing. <laughs> it's this nothing. So now how do we how do we use our words to create connections? How can we use our words to build up other people while we are building up ourselves? And how can we be intentional about doing that? Hmm. Well, so That's my about. challenge for this audience. There's, Be intentional. Yeah. That, that's about something how to think you're about. choosing to use your words. Yeah. Every word counts. Make it count. Like it's money. <laughs> <laughs> it really you, is. You wouldn't squander money. Why would you squander words? Why would you say certain words 
that you don't need to say, and which will ultimately uh, change the outcome of whatever you're trying, your intent. Um, interesting today. Yeah. I, you've said some that I didn't even realize. Didn't even think of them. <laughs> hmm. uh, and this is just a piece of what you do when you coach people in it all is. different areas. Uh, one of the specialties, if you will, is dealing with trauma, which we've talked before. We all deal with trauma, have dealt with trauma, continue to, it, it charts our adult lives, whether you want to believe yeah. it or not. Um, and if you want to know what we're talking about, go back to some past podcasts. Um, but that's just a piece of it. How do we find you, Lori? Uh, you can find me at www.visiblepotential.com. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, but definitely emailing me or connecting with me on my website would be the easiest. Cool. I'm looking forward to talking with you again. <laughs> Fantastic. I'll see you next week. You got it. All right, we're coming right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager learning the lingo. Today I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council.